Last week, we talked about priming your miniatures. This week, we talk about the first step in the painting process, the base coat. Hello, many people. Last week, we talked about priming and how it can have an effect on your first coat of paint, black making it darker and white tinting it brighter. This week, we look at how much of an effect there actually is from your undercoat and how many coats of paint it takes to get good coverage. We'll also be going over the base coat, which is the first layer of paint you put on your minis after you prime them. So let's get it on. So as you can see, we have three coats of primer here, Games Workshop, Tamiya, and Vallejo, black, gray, and white. So we have them organized in rows of one, two, three, and four, and five. And today we're gonna to be taking Games Workshop, Citadel, Enchanted Blue, and painting it into each one of these rows to kind of examine the effect that an undercoat has on the color blue. The same kind of applies to most paints, but can vary slightly. The additional rows, what they're for, is to see how many coats of paint it takes to eliminate the effect of an undercoat so you know when you are painting it on your miniature. So let's get started here. Let's crack open this paint, get some on our palette. And now everyone talks about paint consistency and uh, how important it is. And it changes for various techniques you're trying to do. But for base coating, it's good to shoot for the consistency of melted ice cream. That's what I was told when I first got into painting, and I, I believe it to be true. So right out of the pot, it's a little bit thick. So we'll add some water to it to kind of get to that melted ice cream state. It's a little bit, a little bit lighter than that. And we'll just go and we'll just paint it in to each one of these boxes, every single one. I'll try to get a nice even coat here. And so now we'll let that dry. It's really important to not go back and touch the paint when it's in the process of drying. Because then what you can do is you can take your paintbrush and start to manipulate drying paint and then what you're left with is kind of a coffee ring effect and a little bit of a texture effect where you moved the paint around when it was still drying. So you want to really avoid doing that because that can really texture your mini and it looks really really bad on a miniature because it looks like, a, it looks like it's part of the plastic when it's not and it can really smooth plastic. So we're going to let that dry and then we're going to continue on with the second row, leaving the first row behind. So here's the chart after it's all been finished, all the layers have been placed. To your eyes, can you see a difference in the uh, separate rows? If so, maybe this uh, the pre-shading that I mentioned in the last video is something you might want to look into to kind of further enhance the realism of your model's lighting. But sometimes it's a little bit difficult to tell just from the colors what is darker, what is lighter. So let's take a closer look in black and white. I went ahead and added two more paints to our test, golden yellow and Mephiston red, to see if other paints were affected differently. The information I got from the photos produced these three graphs, one for each paint I used. On the y-axis, you see the color pixel value. The higher the value, the closer it is to white. The lower the value, the closer it is to black. On the x-axis, you see the number of coats of paint. There's a common trend with all the charts. As more coats of paint are applied, each color converges to the same brightness. Some are more separated than others. So what can we learn from these totally nerdy charts? Well, one, how thin your paint is matters in terms of how much of that undercoat shows through. And two, darker paints have better coverage. However, in all of our tests, the undercoat did affect the paint to some degree. While these results were expected, it's good to confirm them with various paints. If you're a total nerd and you want to see how I acquired the values for all of these charts, check the description for this video. Staring at charts can only do so much for our miniature painting skills, so let's take three drives we primed last week. A black one, a gray one, and a white one, and see what they look like with their first coat of paint on them. First things first, there are no rules to painting. Any info I mention right now is stuff I've discovered from my experiences. Feel free to deviate from what I say to learn on your own. Again, we're shooting for melted ice cream consistency. Make sure you don't have too much paint in your bristles by wiping it off on your palette. You can simultaneously twist your brushes to bring your bristles to a nice tip. Try to brush with the features of the model, not against them. 
If you rush against the features of the model, the paint will bunch up on the details, losing your definition. It's worth mentioning that a lot of beginner painters will be tempted to take their brush and paint over details that are in the process of drying. I urge you not to do this. As aforementioned, when you touch drying paint, it leaves a coffee-stained, textured residue. So do your best to not touch the paint when it's in the process of drying and getting into that thicker state. If it's still a little bit wet, you can push it around just fine. But when it gets thicker, leave it alone. Here's the first coat. Here's the second coat. And here's the final coat of paint. Can you tell the difference between the primers? So, armed with the knowledge of how base coats are affected by undercoats, and with a good starting point for paint consistency, go forth and base coat your miniatures in nice, even, smooth base coats. And with that being said, it's time to look at someone from the community's models. This week we got a whole slew of models from my good buddy Luke. Luke is the heartbeat for a lot of people in the hobby, myself included. He mentors me with my painting and has unconditional love for this hobby. Oh, and he also paints amazingly. If you want to see your miniatures at the end of next week's video, email me photos here. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you know a mini man or woman who could benefit from this video, please share it with him or her. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you want to see more mini-related content, please subscribe. And most importantly, don't forget to paint more minis. Am I center? Where am I in the frame right now? You're pretty far center. Pretty far center? What does that mean? What do you want? Hello, mini people. Hello, mini people. Is that good? Did I enunciate? Hello, mini people. Hello, mini people. Hello, many people. I can't say it. Hello, many people. 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 Hello, mm. hello, many people. Last week we talked about priming. Hello, many people. Hello, hello, many people. Whoop.